In 1995, a game was released that combined platforming with the first-person shooter genre. Jumping Flash, developed by Exact, was a bold departure from the world of 2D platforming. Moving into the exciting new world of 3D, did this team manage to create a game that will stand the test of time? Baron Aloha has stolen many beautiful locations from Crater Planet, with hopes of creating a massive private retreat for himself. To put an end to Baron's evil deeds, you play as Robot, a robot rabbit. Employed by Universal City Hall, you are the robotic keeper of the peace. It is your job to fight off Baron's bosses and restore the stolen locations back to their rightful planet. The game starts off with a quick cutscene and drops you into your first world to explore. Unlike most games nowadays, there is no tutorial, so you get to have fun making mistakes and learning from them all on your own. Don't let the bright and colorful world deceive you, as everything in it wants you dead. Time limit runs out, you're dead. Miss the floating platform, dead. Cute little dung beetles rolling up ploppies, nope, it's a bomb, you're dead. Each zone has a mission to complete before you can move on to the next one. You have to collect four energy pills that are in the shape of a carrot. You are a robot rabbit, so of course you'd collect robot carrots. Totally makes sense. Now for you spelling wizards out there, each one of these carrots has a letter above it. You have an E, X, I, and T. I think it's an acronym for something. I don't know what, but if anyone knows what it spells or what it stands for, let me know in the comments. Anyway, after you collect all four carrots, you make your way over to the exit pad, and bam, you beat the stage. There are six worlds total, each having two fully explorable stages, and a final stage that is a boss fight. Each world's biome is completely different from the last and slowly ramps up in difficulty. If anything kills you though, it would be your inability to land on platforms. Monsters are more of a nuisance than a challenge. They're just kinda around for somebody to shoot at and rack up points. On the topic of shooting stuff, you get your basic blaster attack, along with the ability to store up to three special attacks. These special attacks are aptly named after different kinds of fireworks. You have your cherry bomb, roman candles, heat-seeking bottle rockets, and probably the least exciting, twisters. Much like Super Mario games, you can destroy most enemies by jumping on them. Depending on the height, this can one-shot weaker bad guys. The biggest hurdle to get over when playing Jumping Flash is the controls. This game came out before integrated joysticks on console controllers were a big thing. I recommend forgetting everything you've learned about modern first-person shooters and take the time to learn what buttons do what. Don't worry about it, you'll figure out the basics by the end of the first few zones. From the jumping to the sweet sound of the Roman candles, the overall sound effects fit Jumping Flash's colorful style. The music really stands out as each world has its own theme that ramps up for the boss fight. Now for someone else trying to concentrate in another room, having to listen to jumps and blaster sounds for hours on end, uh, I think the sound effects might start getting on your nerves. If you haven't noticed already, the graphics are pretty basic. Enemies have low polygon counts, and a lot of the objects are a solid color. Textures that are placed are pretty simple overall, and don't provide a lot of detail. What really makes the game stand out, though, is the unique art direction Jumping Flash took. The fact they went with a bright, colorful, and simplistic design really gives the world and characters a timeless feel. If they went for more of a realistic look, the graphics would not have aged as well as they have. Jumping Flash is one of those games that mostly holds up for being 27 years old. The gameplay is enjoyable, the music is catchy, and the graphics can stand the test of time. The current cost for a complete copy of the game is about 70 bucks, because it's a little harder to find than your average game. Even with the outdated controls, it's higher than normal price. If you ask me, 
I will tell you, Jumping Flash is totally worth your game time. All right, everybody, hopefully you like this review. If you want to see more content like this, do what you need to do down below. Uh, hopefully you stay safe, stay retro. Hopefully you find the games you're looking for, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.